Today in the video I'm going to show you how to take some awesome HTML and CSS from CodePen and turn it into an ele Elementor editable widget where you can edit any of the fields over here. It just takes a couple of minutes. Let's get started. Hi and thanks for joining. It's Amit from Unlimited Elements. In this tutorial we're going to take some simple HTML and CSS and you can find this HTML and CSS on codepen.io or on every different site or even make it yourself maybe. It doesn't matter but what I'm going to show today is the process of taking some HTML and CSS and creating it into an Elementor widget. So here's our HTML and CSS and I'm going to take you step by step what are the things that you need to make sure of and do? So first of all, when you find code pens online, usually it can be a small snippet of code, but the developer wants to center it on the page. Now, of course, when we're going to use this as a widget, we don't want it centered on the page, but we want it to act as a widget with settings where you can align it or stuff like that. And you can determine yourself the padding and stuff like that. So first of all, whatever is added to the body, which in this case is display flex and vertical center and horizontal center and all sorts of stuff like that, even a background, we're going to want it to delete. Now, it might look like it's messing stuff up, but you can see our button is still here and the button style still works. So whatever is related to the body, I usually delete and I ignore and I leave only the HTML that I want to create into a widget. Next thing, I'm going to wrap this widget with some HTML. Usually to wrap it, I use a div and I give my div an ID. Let's just call it neon button, which is what it is. It is what it is. And over here in the CSS, we can use this selector or this class that, or ID that we've added and I'm gonna tell it to text align center. Now, as long as this button is inline block, text align will know how to handle it and now it's centered on the page. When, when converting this into a widget, I'm going to change the center into a dynamic setting which the user can determine, left, right, or center. So perfect, that's the first step. Next step, I'm going to want to change all these selectors and to put my ID inside before because right now if I'm going to put this CSS on the page it will affect all the A tags on the page and that can be really bad so just to make sure that we're not affecting other stuff on the page before each CSS I'm going to just add my wrapper ID just like that I go one by one. You need to make sure that you won't miss anything and you don't me mess anything up. Here's the third one. And I think this is the last one. Perfect. So we've added our ID selector. And now when adding this to the page, it won't interfere with any other A tags or any other spans that we might have on the page. Perfect, looking good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the CSS over here and see if there's anything that I want to take off. For example, right now, the text is all uppercase. And I don't know, and I want my, my users to determine if they want it uppercase or not. So I'm just going to delete that. Now the text is not all uppercase. It might be not look as good right now, but I still think it's important to let the users determine if they want it uppercase or not. It depends how much you want your users to edit or not. I'm going to jump into WordPress. Inside of WordPress, I have unlimited elements installed. It's a widget library and a widget creator for Elementor. Over here, it's separated into categories and you can create your own categories for your own widgets. I'm going to use a category that already exists. And so I just click on it, which is button widgets, and I'm going to click add widget. Over here, you can give your widget a name. I'm going to call it neon 
glowing button effect and I'm gonna click tab to fill in the widget name click add widget and the widget is added to our list over here to edit the widget I'm gonna double click now this is the framework the widget creator framework for each widget you can edit existing widgets or create your own like I'm doing right now over here it's separated into tabs I have the HTML tab which is what I want to use right now so I just clicked on it and over here I'm gonna copy the HTML by command or control A command or control C to copy and command or control V to paste same thing I'm gonna do with the CSS copy and paste click update to save and I'm gonna click preview just to make sure that everything shows properly and I didn't miss anything that I needed and that I'm not messing up anything that I don't want to mess up by accident you can close the preview and now is the fun part now is the part where we start adding all sorts of attributes that will make this editable the first attribute is going to be for the text so I click on attributes here on top attributes are actually settings I'm gonna click on add attribute text field and I'm gonna give this a name for example button text which is the first thing that I want to be editable here in the value I'm gonna put inside whatever default text I want and of course the users can edit this however they want I'm gonna click update and to test this I'm going into pages I'm gonna open them in a new link so they don't override my current tab I'm gonna click add new and I'm gonna give my page a name and click edit with Elementor this is just for testing purposes you can add your widget to an existing page if you want so in the widgets pane I searched for neon it found my neon glowing button I'm gonna drag that inside and here you go here's our button everything's working but as you can see the text doesn't show the text over here that means we missed one step which can happen if we don't rehearse this before and this isn't edited so I'm gonna jump into the HTML tab and the step that I missed is that I didn't change this text over here to the attribute that we've just added so I'm just gonna click on that and now it's editable and now we jump back in refresh and this is one of the reasons that I don't like to edit my videos is because mistakes can happen and another thing that's important is after adding each attribute to test it so I'm gonna click over here and let's see that everything's working change the text to button and the button text has changed perfect just click save before each time the next attribute we're going to add is for the link so I'm gonna click add attribute and I'm gonna search for the link attribute over here we're gonna give it a name and a default value usually here I just put a hashtag so click add attribute and HTML inside of the HTML I'm gonna change this hashtag into my button link so I'm gonna click link over here and you can see it added two attributes not only link but also link HTML attributes over here I'm gonna click space and paste in the attributes the, these are for the target blank or and no follow and stuff like that so I'm gonna click update and check this every step I do I usually like to check it before to see that everything's working click on the button and here we go here's our link attribute and you can use all the dynamic options and stuff like that that come with Elementor Pro perfect next step next step is adding some typography and styling features so for that what I'm going to do is click add attribute I'm gonna search for typography I'm gonna click here button typography click tab to fill in the name and over here we need to give our HTML a CSS selector so I'm gonna call it neon button I'm gonna copy the CSS selector name which is actually a class name 
and in the CSS or sorry in the HTML I'm going to add a class to the a tag over here which resembles the typography attribute that we've just added click update to save and I'm going to refresh to test this click on our button and here we go we have some typography settings as you can see it's working pretty nicely and of course the users can change whatever they want even maybe letter spacing if they want perfect I'm gonna click update to save and let's see what's next so already we have a pretty cool widget that looks pretty awesome we can change the text the link and the typography the next thing is the colors so we have a couple of colors over here first of all we have the main color so I'm gonna call it primary color and gonna change this into a color field so color picker and we can give this a value over here let's just make it red so it will be distinctive from what we already have I'm gonna click add attribute and in the CSS Everywhere you want to change the color field, you can replace the color to our primary color. Let's see what other places there are. So over here, it's also in the box shadow. It's also when hovering the background changes and it's also for the border which is constructed out of four spans so we need to go over each one of them and change them one two three and four perfect click update to save and i'm going to refresh How awesome is that? Last thing that you might want to add is the text color of the hover. So I'm going to just add an attribute. I'm going to write text hover color and click tab to fill in the name. Over here, we're going to change the color to black. And in the CSS, Let's go to the hover part, which was over here, a, a hover. And I'm going to change the color of the text to whatever the user determines. Perfect. We're done with that. And I'm really, really at the, almost at the end. I'm going to add two more attributes. One is going to be for alignment. So I'm going to jump into attributes, add attribute, go into attribute type, and I'm going to choose a drop down for the alignment, give that a name obviously alignment and give this some values so alignment can usually be center left or right perfect and jump into the CSS and change the text align to the attribute we've added which is alignment here on the right click update to save go into our front end live editor and I'm gonna click on this and let's test the text hover we're going to change it to white and the alignment let's change to left so as you can see the button is now aligned to the left let's hover and you can see that the text now is white everything's looking really really good last thing I'm going to do is add some attributes for the padding so over here you can see padding gonna take this off and in attributes I'm gonna click add attributes search for padding give this a name let's say button padding perfect let's turn on responsive controls just so we have them as well and the top padding we're going to do for 15 let's say and from the side 30 bottom 15 left 30 
And over here, again, like we've done before with the typography, I'm going to put in a CSS selector. Let's just use the same selector that we've used before. And I'm going to click Add Attribute. Click Update to Save. And jump into our editor and refresh to test this. Click on it. And here we go, we have padding and we can play around with this however we want. As you can see now the values are linked so it's changing it from all sides. You can unlink that, change it to percent or pixels and you can see it's also a responsive field which is really cool. So we've added alignment and padding. I think that's about it. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me or post them in the comments. Thank you for joining and I'm going to see you in the next video.